All right, check one, check one. That looks good. Let's even pump it up a little bit. <coughs> hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be an exploration of finishing guitar pedals for noobs. I am a noob, and so if you're watching this, you're also probably a noob, and we can watch it together. So um, I've, for the most part of my life, my pedals have been finished very poorly. I openly acknowledge that and uh, trying to change that presently. So uh, I'm going to be trying to finish this pedal. I'm going to be using spray paints and hopefully in a way that's somewhat user friendly. What you see in front of you is the current status of the project. It really wasn't necessarily planning that I would document this, but I do think it's going to be helpful. I'm in the process of rebuilding an old fuzz face I built like five years ago. And uh, it's just an aluminum 125 BB enclosure. Now I uh, simply started painting this thing. I think you could sand it a little bit if you wanted to to get an even smoother surface. Um, just know that whatever surface you have will show through the paint. So I'm not going for super professional smooth, but if you are going for that, you might want to spend a little time sanding the base down. Then um, I am using spray can paint cans. So what I'm using is like a combination of primer and paint, and it's this dark blue I got from the hardware store for like 3 or $4. Probably would be smarter to get a dedicated primer layer and maybe do like two or three or four layers of that first and then move on to the color. But I decided to kind of go cheap and skimp those all together and we'll see how it goes. Probably is just going to mean that I'm going to need to use more layers in order to get this working, but... I guess we'll see. Um, then what you see here at this point is after a couple of days. So with painting with spray can, paint cans, you have to realize that it's kind of a slow process. It just takes time because you have to spray and then let it dry. And I think these layers are dry maybe about one or two hours, but life kind of gets in the way. And, and what usually happens is I can only do like um, a couple layers throughout the day. You know, if I'm working, when I get home, I can maybe do one right away and then one more at night, and that's really about, you know, maybe one in the morning before I go to work, but uh, if on a Saturday, maybe I can knock out a couple layers, but usually I've just got things going on, so it's kind of difficult to really dedicate the time that you need to to get a bunch of layers cranked out in a day every two hours or so. So, um, it takes time, but uh, that's okay, I'm not really in any particular hurry, but this, is, this has taken me probably three or four days to get to this point. So, um, yeah, this at this point, I've just got maybe three or four layers of this blue, as you can see. I'm using this cardboard box as my base, and this is in my garage. Um, you want the area to be ventilated. Now, I also have a problem because it's wintertime in the Midwest, and it's very cold, so I need it to be warm. If it gets too cold, the paint does weird things. So, um, yeah, I, that's where I use my garage. It's kind of an in-between. It's not super warm, but it's, it's not terribly cold. And it also uh, doesn't get the fumes inside my house where people live. Um, so, now if we play the clips right now, you can see um, I've got kind of a time-lapse thing going on here. After I've got this blue to where I want, I'm going to try to do a little bit of a creative thing here. And I'm taking painter's tape, and I'm applying it in layers um, over top of the blue. And basically, I'm going to shoot a second color over top for kind of an Eddie Van Halen type effect somewhat random, uh, but I thought this would be kind of a cool thing, and I think it ended up looking kind of neat. So, um, yeah, basically just applying these these layers of, of, of painter's tape over top, and then that's going to keep, whatever's, under, whatever's being under the tape, that's going to stay blue, and whatever you can see now, that's going to become orange. So now you can see I'm just testing out my orange. And as you can see there, um, the technique here is kind of important. I start off the pedal, where, and I press the button, and then I slowly and evenly paint over top. And I just try to do my best to, to use that kind of a technique. So um, hopefully that's helpful. Again, starting with your hand off, just pressing the button, and then slowly going across. And um, it worked pretty well for me. And I think the biggest tip I would give is keep your layers light. I think there's a little bit of a temptation to put a lot of paint on so you can see it, but keep your layers light and um, resist the temptation to put a lot of paint on at once. You can always do more layers, but it's hard if you screw up, then you really got to go back down. So um, 
Now I'm doing a little bit of extra drilling to get my enclosure ready to go. You probably want to do your drilling first, but um, I forgot. I changed my process a little bit through, so I'm now I know exactly what the layers are that I want. So um, I just took a, a ruler and I made dots on the locations that I want to try to keep them kind of equidistant from one another. And then I'm just using drill bits to drill out these holes um, using starting with a small bit and then you gradually work your way up. And uh, I find it works better that way than just trying to do the first one with a really big bit. Doing the, the first drill with a, the first hole with a small drill bit makes sure that you're more accurate to that dot location. And I think it just works a little bit better that way. So I've got my holes drilled now, which is pretty exciting. We're now taking a look at peeling off the tape. And you can see that it looks pretty neat with these layers. You get these really clean, sharp lines between one color to the next, which is pretty cool. So I think overall this method worked pretty well for me. And I did have a lot of success. I liked the way that it turned out. And then I'm just drawing in with a Sharpie some uh, indicators for what the controls will be. Probably a lot fancier ways to do it, but that's how I'm choosing to do it. And now, after I'm done with all of that, now I'm doing to my clear layers. And this is just a clear lacquer that's going to go over top and kind of encapsulate everything. And you really just want to make sure that you um, let it... Uh, dry completely before you start with the layers of clear and as you can see I'm actually having a little bit of bubbling come up because I didn't wait, wait long enough for the previous layer to dry so I had to sand this down and, and start over again and as you can see it looks pretty gnarly with the bubbling so don't do what I did here at this point and make sure you wait long enough for the previous layer to dry and so it's not wet and then you should be good to go but uh, yeah once you're done with the clear lacquer then your pedal's ready to put together. So um, I'll give you sh an update here in the next episode of how it all turned out once every I box everything up, and we should be good to go. So thanks for checking it out. Hopefully this helps. See you again soon. Bye. All right, time for a little update. Got the enclosure here, and I'm starting to assemble the pedal into the enclosure. Now, I don't know how well it'll show up here, but you can see my paint did blister, I believe is the term, which is too bad because it actually looked pretty sweet. And frankly, I'm not even 100% sure what I did wrong. Uh, I'm not really an expert in painting, so if you know what I did wrong to cause it to blister, I'd really appreciate that input. But I'm guessing it's a combination of maybe not letting it, maybe not letting the base paint colors dry long enough before I started doing clear coats, or maybe the, the types of paints that I was using were interacting poorly. But I've decided I'm not going to go back. I'm just going to trudge forward. And uh, not my best finishing work, but. I'm still kind of happy with it. My five-year-old said it is the best looking pedal she's ever seen and it makes her want to cry. So uh, I've made a work of art that has moved my child so dearly that I have to keep going forward. So um, what I've done is I started by mounting the foot switch and I've got everything else mount ready to mount and then I did the DC power jack first. Now let's take a look at a DC power jack because it's going to be a little hard and tricky to take a look at it but this is a DC power jack that's in some kind of focus but you can see there's this terminal right here which kind of has this big leg and then these two in parallel on the side now typically this guy here with the big leg is your ground and then this guy's hot and this guy is the battery. But I'm opposite. So I've wired this as my 9 volts in. And I've wired this as my ground. So just kind of got to be mindful of that when you're making a PNP device like this. This, which is normally your ground, becomes your hot and vice versa. Now, the next thing that I realized in my testing is that a lot of my pots are actually backwards, um, meaning the, fun the way that they are functioning is actually backwards of what they should. So we're going to have to 
we're gonna have to fix that switching all around I, I think everything except for the volume control seems to be working and then my bias pot on Q1 something is not right with that guy and I think I see it now upon inspection Oh, well, you guys can tell, but if you look here, my two white wires right here, it just looks to me like I'm not getting very good, it looks to me like I'm not getting a very good connection right here. So I'm going to reflow that. And I may even consider just putting in the fixed resistor for now, and we'll see how that goes. But other than those changes, we're just going to keep moving forward and get this pedal built up.